My last Gran Turismo tip video did quite well, so I thought I'd make another one, and here are five extra tips to help you go faster on Gran Turismo 7. The first tip I'm going to be talking about here is understanding the track's shape and elevation. This is something actually really important to go faster, and obviously not all tracks have a whole lot of elevation, but some do. And on tracks with different bumps, shapes, and elevation, it's important to acknowledge all of this and understand how the car is going to behave when you're using all of these different parts of the track. For example, with cambered corners, corners that are leaning into the turn, you can carry more speed through those turns because the car presses them more against the ground as you go through them. And a really good example of this is the high speed ring. I found quite often on the high speed ring that if I took a higher line and carried more speed through those, some of those cambered corners, I would actually go a little bit faster than if I was to go from the outside to the inside of the cambered corner and outside again. Obviously it, it varies depending on the car you're driving, but faster cars where you can carry more speed, sometimes it's worth just sticking on the high line of the cambered corner, particularly that last turn at the high speed ring. I'm showing an example right now. Another thing to look out for are bumps and crests on the track. For example, when you come to the top radio on at Spa, as you get to the top of the hill, your car begins to lighten right up, and that's because the track stops going upwards and starts to flatten out, and your car's carrying that upwards momentum, which leads to less traction on the track. So when you're going over this bump or this crest, your car's lifting upwards slightly, and in this period where your car is lifting upwards and there's less traction, you have to be extra careful with your throttle inputs, because if you're accelerating too hard and you have less grip, there's a high chance that your car's gonna spin or get sideways. So it's very important to keep in mind different shapes, bumps, and elevation changes on a track, and make sure you know and understand how your car's gonna behave when you drive over these parts of the track. And just another thing on that, if you're coming towards a braking zone and the track begins to dip downwards, when you brake, you gotta be careful there because the rear might become light when you start going over that crest downwards. So just make sure you're braking in a straight line and you're gentle on the brakes. The next tip that I want to talk about are track limits and learning to make the most of them while staying within the track boundaries. Now this is something that if you don't already do it, you can easily start doing it right now. For example, when you're going through Spa, at Rouge and then Radeon, at the top you can cut almost completely over that curb at the top just to save you a few thousandths or hundredths of a second. So you don't have to tighten your turn up as much, you can actually take it quite straight to gain that extra time. Now, I'll show a few other examples on the screen right now where there's just areas where you don't have to always go around a curb, you can cut right over them. Not only the inside of corners, but even on the outside when you're carrying your speed out, making sure you're using all of those track limits on the outside as well, because some tracks you can use a lot on the outside, just make sure you're not running too wide and hitting the grass or something like that. Sometimes there's a layer of concrete or astroturf, or just a little bit of track, extra track limits on the outside of, a, of the curb or the white line that you're able to use. It's quite a simple tip, but if you're not using the most of your track, then you're sacrificing a whole lot of lap time. Just before continuing, I would like to mention that I've linked up with simrace247.com. Simrace247.com is a community-based website that caters for many, and I would highly recommend for you and those of you who have an interest in sim racing to go check out simrace247.com where you can find all your latest news and updates about sim racing. You'll also be able to find some of my video guides and content on simrace247, so please go check it out. My third tip here is about not accelerating too early and making sure that you're patient with your throttle inputs and this is not the same topic as I talked about in the last video about throttle control this is a little bit different what I'm talking about here is sometimes it's tempting to get on the throttle as soon as possible like maybe before the apex of a turn or before it's realistically possible so that you can make it at the corner optimally but when you accelerate too early like this you're going to have to lift back off of the throttle again so that you can actually make the turn before getting on the throttle again on the exit and doing this will cost you quite a bit of time, particularly if there's a long straight on the exit of that turn. You won't make the most of that straight just because you accelerated a little bit too early coming out of the turn before it. So try and fight that temptation to accelerate too early, but don't accelerate too late as well because then you're going to have a similar issue. You should only really begin to accelerate once the front of your car is gripping up and pulling towards the inside of the turn. Because if you're understeering and you start accelerating, the car's just not going to turn, and then you risk getting into a snap oversteer. Your car's understeering and then you're turning, and then suddenly the car flicks around. And that can happen from accelerating too early. But if you're patient on your throttle inputs, and you just wait that little bit longer to make sure that you can make it around the corner with one steady input of the throttle, you're going to make the most of that turn and the straight beyond it. And that is kind of relative to throttle control in the other video. If you can link these both together, then you're going to be really quick. And also make sure you're extra patient on the throttle when you're driving behind other cars so that you don't run into the back of them. 
Now for our fourth tip, we're gonna be talking about steering inputs, and this is mostly gonna be for controller users because it's it's a lot easier to be smooth with your steering inputs with a steering wheel. But that's that's the topic here: being smooth with your steering inputs. And like I just said, it's actually not too difficult to be smooth with your inputs on a steering wheel. It's not always perfect. There are a lot of occasions where people are too erratic with their steering wheel movements, but on a controller it's a lot more difficult because you only have a very limited amount of movement on your thumb and it's very sensitive so if you can very very lightly control your thumb with those movements on the steering you're going to be a lot quicker particularly at that event the final license the final super license test in Gran Turismo 7 where the track is very slippery the car is extra powerful and if you turn too much or if you're too erratic with your steering inputs you're going to keep spinning especially towards the end of that lap at Blanchemont at Spa if you're turning just too much, or if you're left and right, left and right with your steering, the thing just spins. The easy way to get around that is by turning your counter steer assist on. Then you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive with your steering inputs. But if you don't want to be using assist, then you're going to have to be extra gentle with how you move your steering wheel or the controller. In an ideal situation, you should be able to make it through a turn with one steady motion into the turn, and then as you begin to accelerate, you pull out of the, the turn gently and end up in a straight line. If you're getting any real sort of oversteer and having to make micro corrections with your steering, then you haven't taken the corner as good as you could have. When you're entering a turn and you're having to make corrections, there's a chance that you've carried too much speed into that, or maybe you broke while you're already turning. And if you're on the exit of a turn and you're having to make micro corrections like that, you've either accelerated too early or you've accelerated too hard and haven't controlled your throttle properly. So your steering input smoothness is, is very relative to your other inputs, including your braking and your accelerating. So if you can link that up all together, then you're doing very well. But my advice here would not only be very smooth with your steering inputs, be smooth with your braking and accelerating inputs as well. Check out the previous video I did about the Gran Turismo tips on throttle control, because that way you'll be a lot smoother with your steering as well. And for the final tip of the video, I'm going to be talking about braking at the right points. Because if you're braking too early, you have to lift off your brake and then brake again. And when you do that, you're likely to overshoot the corner because when, when you lift off of the brake, you start carrying too much speed into a turn and you end up going deep. Not always the case, but it's definitely not the right way to brake. And you will lose a lot of time if you brake early, have to lift, brake again. Even if you make the apex, you're still going to lose time if you're braking too early. And braking too late, well that one's kind of obvious, you're going to miss the turn and you're going to have to slow right down to make the turn and you've probably missed the apex as well. And not only that, but also if you brake at the right points, but you hold the brake pedal for too long, that also costs you time. You need to make sure that you lift off the brake pedal at the right time so that you can carry speed through the turn. I did cover that topic about letting off of the brake at the right time in another video up there if you'd like to look at it in a bit more depth. But here I'm just talking about braking too early, too late, and making sure you find that good point in between. Ideally you should brake one time into a turn, not have to lift and not have to put it down again. And as you begin braking, that should be the hardest point of braking. And then as you get towards the turn, or as you begin turning in, that's when you should begin lifting off of the brake pedal, which is obviously trail braking. And to find the right braking point, you need to focus on your braking references, which I also mentioned in the previous tip videos. So those braking references are super important. Make sure you nail those. You can use those braking references to help you find that proper braking point and then use that brake, braking reference every time to make sure that braking point is consistent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show an example of each one of these tips that I mentioned alongside a bad example just so you can see the difference and I hope that might help you a little bit. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciated your support on that previous video and I hope you like this one as well. And if you guys do like this one too, then I might make another one of these videos sometime in the future. Let me know what you thought of those tips and as always, feel free to share your own tips in the comments. Others would love to see it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you soon.